Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, about 10.43 a.m. California time. October 17, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here shows a 1.6 into the Montana area, it looks like. Also had a, a little earthquake here on the Cascadia subduction zone within the last hour. It's showing about 53 miles deep here for this 2.4 right at the Cascadia fold and thrust belt. Uh, of course, yesterday we had a, a few more earthquakes along the Cascadia as well. Further down south here off the coast of southern Oregon with a couple smaller quakes, 2.3 and a 1.5. But uh, we are noticing an uptick here of earthquakes up across that fold and thrust belt lately. Uh, again, this latest one. Let me check the details of it and see what we have. It has been reviewed by a seismologist. And it looks like they're st sticking with a depth of 85 kilometers, which results in 53 miles there below the surface for this 2.4 earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone. So getting some interesting activity out here recently across the Cascadia. Uh, Northern California. Aside from the typical region seeing earthquake activity, really nothing major going on. Southern California here, if we look at the 2.5 map and above, well, that's only going to show a 2.8 from yesterday out here. So the majority of these quakes here on the small size here, as far as microquake activity goes, nothing of any major swarming going on. In fact, California here has been a uh, quiet spot uh, in terms of anything that's being felt in terms of larger activity. Uh, still seeing a trail of activity here across the Garlock Fault Shear Zone up through north of Las Vegas and into Utah. This area has been somewhat active here uh, along with Southern California recently. Nothing big going on, but still seeing that microquake activity stretching across this area towards uh, Salt Lake City area. Uh, there's that earthquake way up north into Montana, a little 1.7. Going to be a small crestal quake up here, about two miles there below the surface. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here, but uh, let's just give a quick glance, see what we have uh, on this Thursday. Well, that's it. Not a whole lot going on out here for Yellowstone activity for now. As you can see, uh, there's no readings in terms of seismic activity out here. Some wind events from yesterday that's going to be here in the dark blue. That may kick back up again today. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas still seeing some movement out there across the oil fields couple more quakes here outside the new madrid seismic zone 2.7 2.5 this has been a, another area of increasing earthquake activity here across this uh, major seismically hazardous active area got about seven earthquakes here in the last week alone that's actually a little uptick here last 30 days of activity shows uh, about 28 earthquakes here in the new madrid seismic zone that's going to be centered right in the fault area here where that uh, system is this area very capable of producing upper seven magnitude earthquakes here last couple ones a series of earthquakes back in 1811 1812 struck this area estimated between upper seven but potentially lower eights but uh, you know way back then we didn't have the sophisticated equipment like we do right now but that's the estimated uh, magnitude level and it's been what over 200 years now since we've seen uh, a major earthquake out here. So these earthquakes, these little twos and whatnot, don't really want to call these microquakes because they are above the 2.5 level. Uh, just gives us a friendly reminder that uh, this area is very much alive, uh, tectonically speaking, and uh, will produce a big earthquake here in the future. 2.2 in Georgia from last night, it looks like. Aside from that, worldwide activity, see what we got going on here since last night. Um, South Sandwich Trench this morning, rocking and rolling with a 5.0. Kermadec Trench over here, of course, goodness, that was uh, quite an activity, quite an active event, event here yesterday. We've seen a swarm of earthquake activity out here today. So far, we got, uh, looks like the latest one, a 4.8 shallow earthquake here. Across the Kermadec Trench, that followed a deep earthquake here in the Tonga Trench from yesterday, or from uh, this morning, excuse me. Yesterday, we started to see uh, deep earthquake activity, subsequently followed up by shallow earthquake activity up and down this area. 
Uh, and it's still active. Uh, just because we had the last one there about six hours ago does not mean we're over with the activity out here yet. Super deep earthquake underneath North Island, New Zealand. The Hikurangi subduction zone there is the culprit of potential big mega quakes out here. And it's been uh, hundreds of years as well since the last big time earthquake out there. A lot of regions out here well overdue for some big earthquake activity. Look at all that movement out here. Pretty crazy. All right, as uh, far as the curl cam chat up here, a couple fours off on the uh, one on the plate boundary. and looks like another one off of it. Let's check this out here real quick. Well, USGS not showing any of those. <laughs> so we'll have to take the EMSC data here and show you guys those uh, pair of fours out there in the last couple hours, it looks like, striking that area. Alaska still somewhat active out here across the Aleutian Trench as it has been in the past seven days. Look at all this activity across the last seven days. And a lot of that is a, a good handful of that is above the 2.5 level here. Well, that's, a, that's just a one day, excuse me. Let's go back to the uh, 2.5 seven days here. There we go. I was going to say what happened to them all. That's actually a lot of activity here for, for uh, 2.5 and above in the last week. We've seen a couple fives out there as well bunch of fours all up and down the Aleutian Trench. Keep an eye roughly about this area right here. We've been lacking earthquake activity in terms of larger scale release upon that region. Uh, let's take a look here across the rest of the globe. Things quieting back down here across the Mediterranean after, uh, oh, I'd say about a week of elevated seismicity out here across the area, stretching from about eastern Afghanistan uh, across the area of Turkey and whatnot. Seen that six-pointer out here a day or so ago. Looks like things are calming down slightly. Some more deep earthquake activity out here, looks like, around the Afghanistan. It's going to be uh, right about here. Latest one, a 4.2, fairly deep, 111, 111 miles there below the surface, following that 5.9 from yesterday. Where is that 5.9? There we go. I guess I needed to adjust that a little bit. All right, so yeah, what else? We got five pointer out there around the Dominican uh, Republic, it looks like. No, that's actually off of the uh, Cuba area. <clears throat> There's a uh, subduction zone that sits right around here as well. If I recall, this area has actually been quite active. Let me go back to last 30 days here. Yeah, see, noticing a little swarm of activity starting. It originally began with this earthquake right here, 4.1 off the coast of Honduras. Worked its way here across the plate boundary in the last, uh, that was on the 11th or so, so in the last week. Now it looks like it's further amplifying here across this area to the east along this plate boundary, but that still leaves a gap in this area of the subduction zone. Uh, just south of the Cayman Ridge area, capable of producing some large earthquakes out here. The Cayman Trench. So watch this little area in between this recent activity and the older movement out here. It's pretty much the same plate boundary. Uh, so we've got to keep an eye on that. USGS reporting that as a 4.6. EMSC reporting that earthquake as a 5-pointer. As you can see there on the globe, 5.0 earthquake. Striking things up out there today and fairly active out here across the Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands area as well with a little swarm going on across this trough area. <clears throat> All right, anything else going on here across South America region? Mainly smaller quakes out there. That's very typical on any given day. It makes sense though to see elevated activity here across the Caribbean plate and the reason why I say that if you think about it this Cocos plate here uh, is subducting underneath the the uh, Caribbean plate the middle America trench here it's going to be uh, right about here middle America trench and all the activity we've seen here recently across this area of the middle America trench and further up north is straining the Caribbean plate. It's a very small plate that gets uh, somewhat bullied around out here. The Caribbean plate right there in the pink salmon color between the North American and the South America plate here. 
So that's always getting squeezed, pushed around, subducted, and you name it. So it makes sense to see elevated activity here. Recently, all this movement out here following the elevated activity out here across this plate boundary. Subduction zone adding the squeeze out here across this region. So we'll definitely watch that area here for some larger movement. It's these little signs that you have to pay attention to that uh, could be some little hints at maybe something bigger happening in the region. In Cascadia there. Got to watch that as well. Who knows, you know. I'd like to know what happened prior to the big one up here. If we happened to see, were we noticing fours and fives up here at the time? You know, was there a swarm of earthquakes? Was the tremor activity elevated? Was it, was it non-existent? You know, who knows what happened prior to the big 9.0 up here? Does it just go at once with no signs of any type of uh, of hints? But uh, I do know one thing. We've, we've definitely seen... Uh, a handful of more elevated activity out here across the Cascadia recently right towards the locked area more specifically down here in Southern California uh, the southern area of the Cascadia recently so we'll continue to watch that who knows I mean nobody knows exactly when it's gonna pop Hawaii out here uh, mostly smaller microquakes up and down the area nothing major Another earthquake out here across the Loihi Seamount from last night, little 2.3. Uh, let's see here. Anything else going on? New Zealand. That's just a cluster of quakes out there, man. There's so many quakes from yesterday and last night that uh, it's almost impossible to see all of them. Or to see uh, any new quake activity. I guess down here. In the white color rings just off the North Island coast here, we got a swarm of three stirring up out there. So that's uh, kind of a big deal, right? It'd be right about here. Deeper movement from yesterday, putting the strain up here across the, cast the um, Hikurangi subduction zone. All right, let's go check out space weather activity here real quick, and then we'll move on. Uh, a couple coronal holes facing the Earth. Nothing major that could amplify some solar wind or that could spew out some solar wind stream here and maybe enhance the uh, three day forecast in the coming days. I don't know. I don't see anything specific showing up, but most of the time when we get these chrono holes facing Earth, uh, potentially it could amplify the auroras in the coming nights because it's just high, sp high speed solar wind stream uh, that could affect the, uh, the aurora outcome. Nothing major in the forecast there. No major flares. The forecast has gone down to about 10% for the X flare. M flare at 60. C flare around 99% chance or so. And it looks like the majority of the sunspots are now uh, diminishing. I was watching this area last night, but it looks like it's getting a separation core there. So really not too concerned with that anymore. Same with this area. This little mess back here. Not so much. Maybe within this little core. There's a lot of intermixing of the colors, indicating polarity intermixing. Uh, nothing around the eastern limb yet. We should see an active region here in the next couple days come around that eastern limb. All right, no major severe weather. Uh, goodness, if you can tell, my voice is super dry here today. It's a, I need to take something, I think. Uh, we got dew points here in the... Must be in the low 30s today with humidity down to 10%. That is a major fire hazard out here. We got a strong north wind as well. Uh, potential for some big fires to start in this type of weather. Uh, it's cooler, but goodness, it is super dry out here. Chances of thunderstorms out here across the Intermountain West area, down across the Four Corners as well. Nothing big in terms of severe weather. But uh, we got a lot of dry air in place. So you can feel it. As uh, far as any major changes out here goes, it uh, looks like California is still on tap to get a um, little rainmaker come next week. It looks like towards the middle and end of next week there, decent storm system coming in. Uh, maybe some type of tropical system here. We'll have to watch out. That's a ways out there, November 1st time period, uh, coming up towards Florida and the Carolinas area. Uh, that's, again, a couple weeks out. But uh, we'll keep checking these weather models here and see uh, if they continue to stay consistent or if they change from one model to the next. But uh, either way, 
patterns are changing. The air is uh, definitely changing out here. I want to show you guys here real quick. Um, let me go back to the layers here real quick and show you. <clears throat> Man, I can feel this. It's way drier than this right now, I guarantee you. Uh, that's the ECMWF model. The HRR model is probably a little bit more accurate. Uh, we got dew points really super low out here, and it's going to increase throughout the day. As you can see, it's a broad scale event. Even up in the mountains are going to be super dry. The valley super dry as well. Strong north wind. Humidity super low. Uh, look at these humidity levels out here as well. It's probably going to be drier than that is what I'm guessing. Uh, it shows 26% or so. 24, but the dew point, oh my gosh, is super dry out here. And it's going to be that way 10%. That's a um, man, kind of watch out for that. Any fires that start out here in the coming days is going to be, uh, it's going to be bad. So I'm not even going to barbecue here just to keep the fire hazard potential limited around me because any, any type of fire that's going to start out here is going to spread something, uh, pretty nasty. 11% and it's a broad scale event. Look up here across the Sierra, negative 12, but it's all over i mean it's cooler air coming down but it is super dry and we have not had any significant rain out here across the west coast to limit the fire hazard it'd be different if we had you know a huge rainstorm but all we had here recently was a couple sprinkles out around the area so hopefully no fires start we don't want any big fires we're done with that uh, as far as any major fires right now there is a shoe the shoe fire up here in northern california uh, eight percent containment this thing started out very small in a little area i'm really surprised they're not getting a handle on this more uh, but today not a good day I'm gonna get uh I'm gonna get worse i guess i don't see any hot spots out there as far as satellite based i got two of them on here uh, so that might be good news normally it'll pop up here You'll see um, some orange spots or red spots here in or around the fire perimeter, but I'm not seeing it. So just because it's 8% does not mean that it's, you know, that it's a full blaring fire. But then again, if there's hot spots, the wind would definitely stir that up a little bit. So hopefully they get that under control. It's just south of Mount Shasta there. Aside from that, as you can see, uh, nothing major going on across Northern California. Hopefully it stays that way, but... Uh, they are shutting off power out here to some communities due to the elevated fire concerns. So the folks are going to have to go without power, mainly up here in the mountain range in the foothills. Sacramento Valley here, they normally don't shut off the power because of, you know, the uh, uh, the fire risk. But for the folks up there in the hills, yeah, it happens quite often. So good idea to have a generator, keep your meats and whatnot uh, and your goods uh, frozen or refrigerated anyway folks i'm out of here uh we'll keep an eye on things here today i'll be off and on here on the live stream not a whole lot going on as you can see across the seismograph stations a little spike of an earthquake there in southern california but nothing big for now you guys have a good day we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later stay safe and uh, also did you guys get the earthquake alert this morning uh, about half an hour 45 minutes ago i got a earthquake alert test uh, just let me know here in the comments if you happen to get that test as well. It's kind of a beneficial um, app if you have it on your phone called um, Shake Alert. It's a, a good one to have. It's an early warning system there for an earthquake activity. And uh, you can get it for your Android or iPhone. It's also called My Shake. And they sent me a test this morning of a 4.5 earthquake in my area. And sure enough, it went off. It came through when my phone was on silent and did not disturb. So that is good. Because I think I'd want, to I'd want a notification if there was a big earthquake headed my way. At least give me a few seconds to uh, prepare. Maybe jump out of bed real quick and be, you know, just be alert. So my shake is the name of the app, the early warning earthquake app. Have a good one.